Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here. Thank you for joining us for another Monday market update, 9 a.m. Eastern, every Monday morning. Get you ready for the week. Stocks to watch, economic news that could guide the market, and it is official. We are in a new bull market. Here you see the S&P 500 in green, up 20% from those October lows. We see the tech-heavy NASDAQ here in red, even higher, up 27% from the lows. So official bull market territory, 20% up from the lows of the bear market. And if history is a guide, then investors are right to cheer. The average bull market here we see in a graph from 1926 lasted an average of 8.9 years so almost nine years average bull markets there up total returns of 468 percent from those bear market lows but as we say here on the channel it ain't all rainbows and unicorns there are false starts to bull markets and reasons to be skeptical about this one Fortunately, I may have just found the perfect balance, a part of the market that could do well whether a recession hits and knocks stocks lower or whether they just keep on running. I'm going to detail that in a moment. Stick around after that, though. We'll get to our market update, the stocks I'm watching this week, and the economic news to, to watch. Again, we do see stocks here 20% up from that October low, NASDAQ up 27%. Just year to date, S&P 500 up 12%. The tech heavy stocks in the NASDAQ up 27% just this year. If we look Look closer here at the sector tracker from sectorspiders.com. We see that 12% run in the overall market, but we do see that stocks in the energy sector now down 7% for the year, underperforming that overall market index by 19%. In fact, if we go here into the energy sector, we see that just just three of the 23 stocks there in that energy sector, uh, EQ Corporation, Baker Hughes, and Cotera Energy are up for the year. So what gives? Why did the energy sector go from one of the best performing sectors over the last couple of years, 42% in 2021, to one of the worst, even as the market seems bent on running higher? Of course, weak oil prices are the obvious reason here, but why is the price of oil and natural gas so weak? We see here a graph of the CME futures trading for crude natural gas for crude WTI futures contracts now down at $70 a barrel even on three production cuts announced by OPEC this year okay so OPEC has come out said they were going to cut production three times this year in fact just last week the Saudis came out with a unilateral 1 million barrels a day per per day cut on their own drove the price of uh, WTI crude up to $75 a barrel just that first day on Monday before really sunk, sinking back. And it's struggling to keep that $70 a barrel mark. And this all contrasts with that prospect of a soft landing and economic recovery. Analysts at Goldman Sachs and other banks were forecasting 100 plus oil prices just earlier this year. What I think is happening here is that the oil market is pricing in a steep recession where, where demand for energy products just falls off a cliff globally. And, and again, that is a surprising contrast to what we see with stocks and in the stock market, which seems to be pricing in a completely different scenario, one where we avoid a, an economic recession, where inflation comes down and the Fed can start cutting rates, really a Goldilocks scenario. And the truth is, I'm not sure we get anything like that Goldilocks scenario. Bank lending and commercial real estate are in full-on crisis mode, and we're still just starting to see the slowdown from the Fed's fastest increase in rates in over 40 years. As I alluded to earlier, I think fortunately that disagreement in market outlook between these two markets may be offering the perfect setup for your portfolio a way to invest that benefits, protects you from the downside, but still benefits if the economy still keeps humming along. We see here the sector level forward PE ratios. This is from FactSet, free resource there on the internet. Just type in FactSet earnings insight into the uh, into your Google there. Scroll almost all the way down to the bottom. You'll find these S&P 500 level, sector level of PE ratios. Now what this is, is all the stocks in each sector of the economy from technology, consumer discretionary, industrials, energy there on the far right, the S&P 500 as a whole in the middle, all the stocks in each of those sectors or the market as a whole divided by what analysts expect earnings to be reported by those companies in the next 12 months. So it's really a PE ratio, price to earnings ratio uh, for on the outlook for stocks over the next 12 months for each sector. It really shows you which stocks are expensive, which stocks are cheap. You've got the current forward PE ratio there on in dark blue. In green is the 10 year average. So the average valuation on these stocks gives you a, an impression again of which sectors of the economy are priced expensive right now and which ones are cheap. And if we do look all the way over to here to the right, stocks at energy companies have already sold off with that sector trading for just 10.6 times on that forward PE basis. Now, if we look at the green here, the 15.6 
average here over the last 10 years, that is a 32% discount to the average ratio. Okay, so stocks in the energy sector trading at 10.6 times PE ratio, now at a 32% sell-off, 32% discount from that long-term average. You see that nowhere else in the market. If you look here at the market, the S&P 500 as a whole trading for 18.5 times on that PE ratio, that is about 7% higher than the 17.3% or 17.3 times PE ratio over the last 10 years, that 10 year average, some of these even more so. Information, information technology, tech stocks, trading at 26.2 times on a PE ratio, well above the 19.2 times PE ratio over the last 10 years. So very expensive tech stocks, consumer discretionary, very expensive. Most of these are trading well over their long-term average PE ratios. You've only got a few sectors that are trading at a discount to those averages and none of them even close to what energy is trading at. Now, despite that huge sell-off and the discounts we see here in valuations, most oil companies are still producing oil at a cost basis of under $45 a barrel. So here with oil at $70 a barrel, we're still seeing cash flow machine Machines from these energy companies, you're still going to see those dividends coming out. You're still going to see the share repurchase programs that are going to support earnings per share. If, however, we do get that soft landing and the economy starts growing again, like it seems like the market is saying here, without that recessionary reset, oil stocks are primed to take off. Okay, fears of that slowing demand are going to quickly give away to worries of a supply deficit in oil, and we will really quickly be back up to $100 plus in oil per barrel barrel by late this year if we don't see any kind of a slowdown or a recession. Now you can use that same sector tracker on sectorspiders.com to find some of the energy stocks there in the S&P 500. Uh, some of the great names that we covered there in 2021 last year made a lot of money on those in that rebound off of the pandemic recovery as well as dividends now down double digits and I'm buying back in to give us that, uh, that balance between recession or no recession scenario. We see Devon Energy here, ticker DVN, down 19% so far this year, we see uh, some safer names like Chevron Corporation, ticker CVX, one of my favorite oil stocks here, down 11.5% just so far this year. We see other names like ConocoPhillips, ticker COP, also down 12% for the year. So again, the play here is to increase your position in energy stocks. I think either way, recession or no, it could be a win-win for investors in oil stocks. If we do get that soft landing and the stock market keeps on continuing higher, we're going to get $100 oil very quickly. A lot of these oil companies that have sold off by double digits just this year are going to rebound fast. They're going to increase their dividends just like they did over the last couple of years, and you're going to make a lot of money. Even if we do get some kind of a recession scenario, even if it's a steep recession, oil is already priced for that. It is already priced as if we're going to get that drop in global demand for oil. Prices are going to come down. Those oil companies are still going to be cash flow machines, and you're still going to do well. Those stocks already fallen aren't going to fall as much as the rest of the market, especially the, the tech stocks that we've seen grow 27% just so far this year. Those oil stocks aren't going to fall quite as much as the rest of the market, and you're going to be protected on your downside. Here, I want to open up up to our Monday market update. Some of the stocks I'm watching this week. First up here, SoFi Technologies, ticker SOFI. Here we see this stock up huge just so far this year, up 82% since the start of the year. This is one of my biggest positions in my portfolio. I've been talking about this one a lot. I think this is going to be a major bank here in the future. It's going to hold its annual meeting of shareholders on Wednesday with, again, investors very happy with that 82% run in the stock so far this year. Uh, I've been investing in SoFi since last year as one of my favorite stocks over the next 30 years. And the shares are already up 36% from my own average cost. So even jumping in a little early last year, already up more than 36% on this stock. The bank is looking a little expensive right now at 1.4 times on a price to book value after that huge run so far, though I think the long term is very much higher for this stock. We could see some short term upside on investor enthusiasm continue to take this one higher. If it does go up to about $10, $12 a share within this year, I might be kind of hedging some of my position with a short term covered call um, just to take a little bit of that risk off. But again, I still like this stock up to at least $14, $15 over the next few years. Kroger ticker KR is going to be reporting its earnings on Thursday with the shares really stuck for more than a year, but now looking relatively attractive on a valuation basis. So this stock, along with a lot of the other grocers and food stocks, really zoomed higher in the pandemic as people were buying nothing but groceries, but has then leveled off and flatlined since then. Analysts are expecting earnings of about $4.50 a share this year on about a 1.7% revenue increase to $150 billion. Now that puts the stock at just 
just 10.2 times on a PE basis versus the fair value average closer to about 14 times over the last few years. So this stock, once again, trading in very attractive uh, value territory. Kroger Groceries, obviously a very safe stock and a very stable revenue growth on this. So if you're looking for something that isn't going to let you down, something that is value based right now, you get that 2.3% dividend yield while you wait for the shares to go higher. The earnings report will add some will be a good read on overall health and the consumer spending as well as well as could be kind of a clue into how walmart is doing okay right now walmart one of the, the largest retailer in the world is now booking about 54 56 percent of its revenue in that grocery segment so it'll be interesting to see what kroger says about health of the consumer spending in that grocery segment to see get kind of a clue of what walmart is going to say in their next report as well Teva Pharmaceuticals, ticker TEVA. This is another big position in my portfolio. I've been talking about this over the, about the last year. They announced a closure of its nationwide opioid settlement last week, a move that really clears a major hurdle for these shares. Okay, the drug maker is one of my largest positions, again, deep into discounted valuation territory. Com company generates about $1 billion in free cash flow a year. It's aggressively paying down its debt. At one point, it had debt owed debt of over $32 billion on the balance sheet. That's now down to about $19 billion has moved on from a lot of the problems that's plagued the stock over the last couple of years. But this is still trading for just three times on a price to earnings basis. That is about half of what some of these other drug makers uh, trade for. Six, eight, ten times price to earnings. This one just three times price to earnings. Shares will still be cheap. I hit my target at $12 each. So I'm looking at a target of at least $12 over the next couple of years, upwards of $14, $15 again also for this one over the uh, over the little bit longer term. The market going to be focused on what the Fed says on Wednesday with its Fed meeting, if it's going to raise rates. Right now, expectations are that it's going to pause its interest rates hikes this month. Next month in July, it's going to raise it one more time. Investors could get an early wake-up call, though, here on Tuesday when the Consumer Price Index, the CPI, that measure of inflation, is expected to show a big drop in annual inflation due to really just due to falling energy prices over the last month. While the headline reading of 4.0% uh, year-over-year inflation versus 4.9% reported last month. Now, removing that, though, removing those kind of volatile month-to-month -month energy and food costs, though, going to make it look like core inflation is a little bit more stubborn than we'd like to see. It's going to drop to 5.3% annual pace versus 5.5% reported last month. So if it does come in, in that or anything close to that, then I think that's going to be a rude awakening for investors that see that the Fed, while they may pause their interest rate hikes here on Wednesday, are going to have to keep on raising them here in the future if if inflation does not come down as fast as they need it to come down. Check out the video on the right for four monthly dividend stocks that will pay you every single week. I'll show you every monthly dividend stock when it pays and the four that will put cash in your pocket every single week. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.